Hi friends, some time ago I released a video where I showed how to increase the output current of almost any switching power supply. I recommend watching that video, the link is in the description, a really interesting video. So in that video we remade 12 volt power supply for 10 amperes. We lowered the voltage to 5 volts and raised the current to 20 amperes. It's obvious that we haven't increased the power of the power supply. Today, at your request, I will show you how to increase the power as a whole. As a test subject, we have a cheap Chinese phone charger. On it, I will show the principle of rework and you can use the same principle for reworking other power supplies. The manufacturer claims that power supply voltage is 5 volts and provides a current output of up to 1 ampere. Well, let's check. As a matter, I will use a high-precision USB tester and as the load will be a wire variable resistor. I connect the tester to the charger and we can see that the voltage is really within 5 volts. Well, let's load it. Here we clearly see that when the output current is more than 800 milliamperes, the output voltage drops below 5 volts and at a current of 850 milliamperes, the drawdown is very hard. This is the limit. If we load more, the protection will work. Based on this, we can say that the parameters declared by the manufacturer are too high. But even with a current of 800 milliamperes, such a unit will not live long. For it, output currents of 400 to 500 milliamperes are relatively safe. For old phone models, this is enough, but not for a smartphone. As a result, we can say that the power supply capacity is within 4 watts. Let's memorize this value and open the case of device. Inside, everything is budget. The quality of the board itself is average. But you can order high-quality printed circuit boards on the GLC website. They provide the shortest time to manufacture the boards, only 24 hours from the date of the order, fast delivery, and low pricing ranging from $2 for 10 boards with dimensions of 10 by 10 cm for any color. The complexity, size, and number of layers of the board aren't important. The company can manufacture any boards. Most importantly, they are high quality. A link to the GLC website can be found in the description. It was built on a fairly popular topology. It is an auto-generator switching power supply with current protection and stabilization of the output voltage. The unit is built on just one transistor. Usually, this is a high-voltage bipolar transistor from the MJE series. In my case, MJE13003 is installed. This is pretty good. Sometimes they put a transistor of much lower power. There is another transistor in the circuit. A protection system is built on it, but I will say more about it later. Feedback or voltage stabilization is built on the basis of an optocoupler and an ordinary Zener diet. In general, if you look carefully, there is a seat on the board for installing a voltage source in T092 box, like TL431. But the manufacturer decided to save money and install an ordinary Zener diet. What can I say about the whole circuit? I will tell you a secret, exactly this topology I really like. If done correctly, such a simple circuit on a single transistor will work very well for many years. Now about the rework. First we remove the output rectifier. Here installed 1 ampere short key diode 1N5819. Next, we find almost any short key diode with a current of 2 or preferably 3 amperes. In my case, it is a 3 ampere SB340. It is quite big and is located next to the output electrolytic capacitor. The capacitors don't like the heating, but the diode will warm up so it was installed on the back of the board, that is, on the side of the tracks. As for the tracks, I removed the solder mask from the positive line and strengthened the track with solder. Next, unsolder the input and output capacitors. Both are electrolytic. The output is 10, 
volts 470 microfarads the input is high voltage 400 volts 2.2 microfarads it is desirable to put low esr output capacitor that is with low internal resistance you can get such from computer power supplies i found with a value of 1000 microfarads in principle 470 microfarads is enough I put it, but then I will remove it, because it prevents to install the board in the native case. The second capacitor is replaced with the 4.7 microfarad. Ideally, it is desirable to set 10 microfarad, but there is still little space in the case, so this is the compromise solution. Capacitors must be checked for proper operation, leakage, loss of nominal capacity, and internal resistance. Next, the most interesting thing, we unsolder the pulse transformer, remove the scotch tape and throw the transformer into boiling water for a minute so that the glue weakens, then carefully separate the halves of the core. Generally speaking, this transformer has an overall power of about 5 watts and ideally the core needs to be changed. I specifically emphasize that so some people shouldn't make additional comment on this. After that, we remove the scotch layer and under it we find a thin winding. This is our basic winding, wound with 0.15 mm wire and consists of 13 turns. By the way, the secondary winding of the transformer also contains 13 turns. The winding is carefully removed. After our rework, it needs to be reeled back, but this wire length is no longer enough, so this piece is no longer useful to us. Removing the next layer of adhesive tape, we reach the secondary or power winding. We remove it. As said earlier, the winding consists of 13 turns, is wound with 0.3 mm wire. Hence this insignificant output current. I took the 0.45 mm wire, folded in half and wound 13 turns. There was a 0.3 mm winding, now became 2 by 0.45. There is enough space on the frame for this thick layer. By the way, I forgot to specify that all windings are wound in exactly the same order and direction as the factory windings, so as not to confuse the beginning and the end of the windings, I advise to take a couple of photos before the unwinding process, so as not to confuse anything. Winding in one row will not fit, this is understandable. Between the layers and at the end of the winding, we must put insulation. In my case, the insulation is kept in heat-resistant tape. Next, we wind the base winding exactly as it was originally wound, and again we put the insulation. Everything is ready. It remains to assemble the transformer. Before assembly, you need to carefully clean the frame and halves of the core from the old glue. We are assembling a transformer. The halves can be tied down with a scotch tape or a drop of superglue. But this should be done only after we make sure that everything is working properly. We put the transformer in place and probably you thought that was all. But no. We still have to fool the security system. In such a simple circuit, it is very easy. We look into the emitter circuit of our main transistor. The emitter is connected to the input minus through a resistor. This is a low impedance resistor with a resistance of several ohms, in this case 5.6 ohm. We have this resistor as a current sensor and at the same time limits the current through the transistor. Protection works in this way. The more powerful the output load, the greater the voltage drops across this resistor. And, at some point, this fault will be enough for the low power transistor to work. If opening, it connects the base of the power transistor to the ground. Power transistor closes, and therefore, the output voltage disappears. Everything is very simple. So, reducing this resistor, we increase the protection current value. The resistor is half a watt. We replace it with a similar one. Only instead of 5.6 ohm must be taken from 2.2 to 3.3 ohm. Perhaps in your case, you will have to replace the transistor. I was lucky because in my device, the factory transistor could pull desired additional power. Also, the input resistor was replaced. 
It is purely in the role of a fuse. Resistance is 1 ohm, power 0 0.25 watt, was replaced by a half watt. Now finished, it remains only to repeat the test, which we did at the beginning of the video. Let me remind you that the first launch of the unit must be done through a 5 to 10 watt safety lamp. It is necessary. And do not touch the board during the operation. It is better to close it with something dielectric. In the range from 1 to 1.3 amperes, no noticeable drawdown is observed. And this is the maximum that I managed to get. Above that value, the protection works. Now, the output power of the unit is almost 8 watts, and at the beginning there was only 4. The result is obvious. This is cool, of course. Anyway, I will emphasize once again that the transformer core needs to be changed. It works beyond its capabilities. Then I straightened out some bandy installed components, refreshed the soldering. In such budget units, it's extremely unreliable. Well, in the end, everything was cleaned from the flux. The power supply is ready. Friends, I hope you were interested. Please rate this video and click on the bell not to miss new releases. All necessary info is in the description. If you have questions related to electronics, welcome to our group. The link is also in the description. At this, I say goodbye. Until we meet again. With you was Kassian TV.